From its inception in 1750, the Annick Garden has always been a progressive, forward-thinking and contemporary garden. Nestled between the town of Annick and the capability brown landscape of the castle, the Annick Garden has evolved and changed with each generation of the Percy family ever since. An ambitious development plan that began almost 15 years ago saw the seed sown for a garden that would not only become an example of contemporary gardening excellence, but one created with the people at its heart. We aim to inspire and connect people in an inclusive garden environment, creating learning opportunities that enrich the lives of people of all ages and backgrounds. So many projects that we do, all of them have got a will have a different meaning to the to the to the user. So, um, if if you have a look at the, the sprouts, for example, um, you know the kids coming in learning about drug awareness, um, they probably get taught a lot of that at school. But when they come and see the poison garden and they get hands on on the way we, we use the, the NASA spiders and drugs um, uh, as a project as a as an example of how how drugs can impact your life, all of a sudden to to see it practically and actually see poisonous plants, it just hits home more. And this tree here, this is the original source of aspirin. It's a white, white willow, and the bark actually contains salix that you get aspirin from. Because if you overdose on aspirin, your stomach bleeds, and you actually damage your liver. I think it's important, it's, it's, it's um, just an amazing venue uh, to be in. Um, I think that many um, of our students, and, and probably a lot of the young people generally, haven't been to a place like this before. It, it is a fantastic place, and just the the, the splendour of the of the garden um, really makes an impression on the on the students, and that does help them to to engage with their tasks as well because they're in a they're in an environment that's nice to look at. It's pleasant to be in, and there's a there's a good vibe here, and I think that helps them learn. The roots and shoots uh, where the kids come in and they get to grow their own vegetables and then eat them at the end of it, it's such a powerful message because you, again they, you can drum it in through TV ads all day long about you got to eat healthy but to actually see how to grow fruit and vegetables and how healthy they are for you and then, and then eating them at the end of it is, is, is massively powerful. For the first session uh, we'll have uh, the kids split into two groups so they'll take half of the plot each um, feed the ground, dig it over, weed it, do all the, the standard prep work for, for an allotment, sow some seeds so uh, over the next couple of months they'll be able to see the seed starting from you know the seed until the, the, the plant that it grows into. So it's not just about um, kind of getting the kids to do it here and you know assessing them and making sure they can do it, it's making sure that they can take those skills and the teachers as well uh, take those skills back to their school and then pass it on to people from there. We're planting different kinds of veggies, uh, radish, uh, carrots, onions, leek. Well, we're going to take some home and like cook them at home, or like give them to someone that we know, and like, and then with some of our, like the potatoes, we're going to cook them and eat them. And uh, once we stop coming here for the last, the last time we come here, any any vegetables we can't take home should be done by the time, oh, by the time of the last time we come. So uh, the cooks will cook uh, all the vegetables we've made so far, and we'll, and we'll hopefully have some salads, uh, uh, stews, without any meat, uh, soups, that sort of thing. <laughs> Elderberry side, I mean, the, the, the fact that we've got the drop-in centre now, uh, our clinic cafes, all the activities of bringing people together, um, the, the vibe that you pick up and the, the, the new friendships that you can physically, physically see being made, um, the gentleman's garden um, is something that uh, you can see the value is there and they, they, they see the garden as a place for bringing people together and, and you know, breaking that loneliness, isolation and making Northumberland a great place to grow older. Mm -hmm. We have to remember that people with dementia have lost their memories, they haven't lost their minds. So it's important to keep them and give them experiences and things to do that stretch them. And this is what our um, sessions here at, for Blooming World do. It just 
takes them out and gets them doing something for themselves, something different. I didn't realise how interesting it is and how satisfying it is that you make them grow and then you enjoy eating them, which is rather nice. The only bit that's hard for myself, my wife's a handicap, so I have to hire someone. So, so in reality, it's an expensive hobby. <laughs> It's such a, you have to have quite a break in that situation, so it really is perfect. Because you have to have it, as, otherwise there's no one to talk to. Mm -hmm. And then we've got our forget-me-nots, um, where the kids come in, kids with special needs come in, and they get to do therapeutic gardening activities. And I mean, I've, I, when you just sit um, and, and work through one of those sessions with them, you can just see the, the enjoyment and how they look forward to coming to the garden. You should be scared in case Sam's sitting in a chair. Wow! Well, we come down once a month to our little garden project with our friends. So we have a little plot each and we turn to our vegetables and we receive instruction, don't we, from Rob and Si on how to be good gardeners. Becca loves trees and plants, she loves coming to the gardens and she loves the beehive here and she's friends with Sam there, so we come out and socialise, don't we? But we learn some gardening skills which we then take back home because we get homework to do at home. So we've got our sunflowers and we've got our cuttings, haven't we? So we practice what we learn here at home. But she likes it because I say, Becca can't speak, but I say we're going to come down and see Rob and Si and come see our friends. We're going to come to the gardens and we're all smiles, aren't we? It's good fun. And the Enterprise is a newer one um, and there it's about empowerment. So the people who are involved there, they get young, youngsters, but on a slightly older than Sprout. So you're looking at sort of 16 onwards, the young, young adulthood. And um, there it's about empowering them to be able to give them that step up that they need to either get a job, a permanent job, or to create their own jobs. We've been fortunate to be part of an employability program um, that the, the garden runs to. Uh, and uh, we brought some sick formers to, to that day. And it was a workshop that was put on really to give the students uh, job skills in order to, to find work when they leave school. These particular students um, had opted not to go to university uh, and would be joining the labour market, some of them within two or three months. So the day was not only to give them the skills to be able to find a job, but the, the confidence and self-belief that they can find the job they want. <laughs> As Stuart Hobart Foundation, we identified quite some time ago the lack of help for the elderly in a certain type of way. Not like we're age concerned, as it, which is brilliant, but the way we, we do it here, which is just getting people together. The social element of it, where they can be together and talk, and then we can bring other things in too. For us, it's helping a strata of society which are quite often ignored. I've just been doing a Zumba class. Oh, it's lovely. Get you a bit of uh, adrenaline going, get you moving about a bit. It'll do your health the world of good. Good for your blood pressure, good for your bones. Just good for everything, really. Keeps you fit, keeps you agile, keeps you very agile. And a lovely, lovely venue to have it in. It's the nicest venue I've ever done Zumba in. It was lovely. What we see with the elderberries here is something which is new, novel and exciting. This is something for the elderly people, of which I'm going to be one soon as well, which we're therefore giving back to the community. We've only lived here for seven years in uh, this area, so we're fairly new, so, you know, to join something like this uh, for a newcomer is, is excellent. Yeah, sure. It's a good way of getting to know Lovely. people mm. and to be doing things. Yeah. Yeah, everybody Very here is so friendly, friendly. and um, so you don't feel excluded, you feel included.
you know, any donation and support and sponsors, uh, it just allows us to do more, you know. Our donors, for obvious reasons, they're, they're giving people, they want to see an impact. Um, so we need to, to show them that we, we are making that impact that they desired. So I think, yeah, part of it is being involved in the gar garden, but also buying into what the garden's about, about the people, about the community. So we share that. So if you have a look at the, the new drop-in centre uh, with the Stuart, Stuart Halbert, Halbert Foundation and the Elderberry side of things, they see that we are implementing that. They get satisfaction out of that because that's, that's, they're wanting to help people grow older in, in, uh, in Northumberland. So we, we just act as a delivery agent for that. When we look at Amic Garden, more specifically the Elderberries in our case, which we support, sponsors, the Stuart Halbert Foundation, you also need other people engaged, whether it's people bringing iPads, helping some of the teaching and then giving money as well. Um, these things just do not run without money um, and there's no nice way of saying that. The donors are important and the cash they give is really important. Help us grow. 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 Help us grow.